Today's project is an one piece beaded jar double decker version. In a previous video, I made a few different types of one piece beaded jars. In this video, I'm going to make a double decker version. It has two stackable pots and creates a good feature in the kitchen. I use 1 kg buff clay with 10% lava clay on a full size throwing bat. I make a cone shape to equalize the clay's density. When I hold the clay, my left hand is slightly higher than my right. This position creates a natural spiral effect. The clay follows the direction. I make the center hole with my right thumb. Then make the hole deeper with three fingers. I leave the bottom about 7 mm thick. Then pull the clay up with my fingertips. I repeat this a few times and place my left hand outside to keep the cylinder size. Now I have a nice even straight wall to pull up. My right ring finger is pressing the bottom clay. My right middle and index fingers are lined up with the ring finger to keep the wall straight. Both thumbs are interlocked to connect my hands. I'm going to stretch the wall with this handmade tool. I will also compress the bottom and internal corner with this. I place the edge of the tool at the bottom corner. My right arm is pressed against my body and keeps the same position. My left hand is upside down and the index finger is pressing the wall against the tool, then slowly lifts the clay up. I repeat the same process. But when the wall gets thinner, it is easy to drag the clay. So I need extra water to make the surface slippery. I shape the cylinder to a straight line. The line is a guide where I start to squeeze the cylinder. Before I close the top, I need to take the water from inside the cylinder. I make a diamond shape with my hands and start to squeeze the cylinder from the line. When I reach the top, I pinch the edge to stop the clay starting to buckle. It is easier to close it nicely 
if I keep the top edge straight up. Otherwise, the roof can collapse easily. The hole is closed now. I can shape the pot easily as the trapped air holds the pot. The top edge needs extra tension. I use a takeaway chopstick to make a recess. I prefer to have one centimeter distance from the roof edge. If the recess is too close to the roof edge, it is easy to ruin the edge and the visual balance in the later process. This is the second recess. I mark a guideline first to check the balance between the top and the bottom. I prefer the size to be equal or the top is slightly smaller than the bottom. The bottom recess should not be too deep or it will collapse during the drying time. I'm making air vents. The pot will shrink during the drying process and the trapped air will make cracks if there is no exit for it. I made a few holes as a backup vent. I cut the guide for the strings to cut later. Time for the trimming. After I leave the pot overnight, it's ready to trim. I wet the bottom of the pot to make it stick to the wheel. The skimmed clay which I'm pushing down can secure the pot position. The recess I made when the pot was still soft is not deep enough, so I'm pushing it more to deepen it. If I push too deep at the soft clay stage, the pot will collapse at the recess part sometime, especially the bottom recess. If I make a recess at the trimming stage, I often end up with a distorted pot. So the two-step method works well for me. After I press both recess, I'm going to separate the parts with a thin needle. The thinner needle is better for this job. I'm going to trim the lid recess on the pot. This small wooden tool came from a Japanese sweet box. It is a kind of throwaway cocktail stick. I use this a lot for the detailed trimmings when I want to do trimmings and compressing at the same time. By just slightly changing the direction, I can change the purpose of this tool. I made a wall thick enough to make a gallery for the pot.
Now I separate the bottom part. I'm making a chamfered edge. This helps when lifting the pot from the table and visually it gives a lighter feel. I'm going to make a concealed foot ring for this. This can also have a flat bottom as the pot is not going to hold hot food. Now the top jar needs a bottom. I make a simple slab with a rolling pin. The side bars are two millimeter thick. I change the rolling angle to stretch the clay in a random direction as I want to avoid one point of stress to the clay, which would cause cracking. Then I compress the clay surface with a spatula on both sides from the outside towards the center. When you attach the jar to the bottom, it is better to add soft clay at the joint to help the attachment, as I have shown in previous videos. Now all the parts are ready. I just need to trim the bottom joint part. The process is the same as before.
I want to make the lid fit the jar a bit tighter. This is the final adjustment. I dry all the parts stacked as this holds them together. 